It's here. Victover is finally here. Happy Victover, everyone. And in the words of Tom at Tom Reads Things, Booktube is a buzz with Victover, and I couldn't be more excited. I cannot wait to hear about all of the books, plays, poems, short stories, even some nonfiction that you lovely people will be reading this month. I can't wait to share what I'll be reading with you. I am hoping to vlog throughout the month. We'll see if I am successful. I will try and that's all I, the best I can do is to try. I This video is kind of like some bits and bobs that I'm really excited for that will sort of enhance my Victober experience, just make Victober even better than it could be different things that I think will be fun and some that you can also take part in. The first thing that I am excited about is on its way to me now as I'm filming, and that is a Team Bronte shirt. So I have spoken, I think in vlogs, I don't think in an official video, but about the podcast called Bonnets at Dawn, which is where two lovely ladies, one who is definitely more a Bronte fan and one who's definitely more an Austin fan, discuss kind of the Austin Austin versus the Brontes. And uh, they do go into other authors as well, including Elizabeth Gaskell. So if you are reading North and South this month, I highly recommend you check out their podcast because they have several discussion episodes for each, uh, for several sections of North and South. And they're just such uh, effervescent personalities. They have this real irreverent sense of humor, which is really fun when it comes to Victorian literature. And in addition to that, they also have a wives and daughters one. They also discuss Frances Hodgson Burnett's um, The Shuttle, which I'm very intrigued to read because I only know about her doing A Little Princess. Anyhow, they sometimes have Team Austin shirts that they sell. And right now they are, they are when you see this, it will have been a couple weeks ago. I did talk about it on Instagram, but I'm sure they will eventually be selling Team Bronte shirts again, but they do it periodically. And I have been wanting one for the longest time. I am really, if you had told me five years ago, I would have picked a Team Bronte shirt instead of a Team Austin shirt. I would not have believed you. But now the phase that I've been in lately, unfortunately, I have not really been in the mood to read Jane Austen which is really a shame because I did, you know, at a, some point I really loved Jane Austen. And it's not that I dislike her now, it's just that I'm feeling very drawn to the more gritty, um, emotionally powerful, really up close and personal experience that you have when you read a Bronte novel. When I read an Austen novel, I feel that the characters are a little bit aloof and it feels very restrained, which is her writing style. And that's, it worked for her, but I know that lately when I think about novels that really speak to my soul, it's Wuthering Heights, which is an amazing, awe-inspiring, terrible, and all-immersive novel, all in one thing, and Jane Eyre, which you just feel so compelled to root for Jane as you're reading it, and Agnes Grey, and there are several others that didn't quite jive with me upon my first read. And so I'm actually working very slowly on rereading through those uh, to see if maybe I would like them more on a second time, because I just know the other three are just such special books to me. I am currently stuck in Valette. I actually put it on hold for Victober because I wanted to focus on other things. So I think I'm about a quarter of the way through Valette. It's, a, it's, it's hard. I'm appreciating it more the second time around. So we'll see what I think once I'm through all of it. But the other ones are Shirley and the Tenant of Wildfell Hall, actually. So yes, I'm very excited about the Team Bronte shirt. And I will just be thinking about Heathcliff and Jane and Mr. Rochester and Thornfield Hall whenever I wear it. So I will definitely be wearing it in blogs and maybe some Victober videos towards the end of the month. The second thing that is making my Victober are Yankee autumnal Yankee candles, the autumnal ones. I'm not really a spring and summer type of candle lover, but the fall scents, the ones that are not sugary sweet, the ones that are like spicy, they have like creme brulee candles or like, uh, what was it? Banana walnut bread, things like that. And that to me is just kind of an overpowering type sweet. 
So I have four here to show you. Through coupons and sales, I actually didn't have to spend that much. And I have been saving these. I've not burned a single one of them until October 1st. I wanted to save them just to make Victober all the more exciting. And the first one I will show you is Autumn Wreath. I think this might be my least favorite out of the bunch, not because I dislike it, but because the others I really like. Now, in the process of kind of doing more research on these candles, I have happened upon Candletube, which I did not know about before uh, August of this year. And it is just a really fun corner of the internet. I will link the channel that I'm subscribed to, which is Mike at Hauling Wax. I only subscribe to one channel because I thought, you know what, I'm already using my YouTube time on BookTube and I just can't totally immerse myself in candle tube. So I thought I'll watch one channel and kind of get my candle tube itch from there. But I have learned so much. And firstly is that there is a top note, middle note and bottom note to candles. So I have the scent notes for these from the Yankee Candle website. And first I do want to give this a smell. Yeah, like I said, the ones that are spicy, just they are not sickeningly sweet. I really like them. And the notes for Autumn Wreath, the top notes are green leaf, apple, then we have cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, woody notes, and vanilla. So <clears throat> very much looking forward to burning this. Then we're moving on to, let's do sugared cinnamon apple. This is a really sweet, um, a sweet one, but like I said, spicy too. Really, really lovely. I almost smell a hint of citrus. The scent notes for sugared cinnamon apple are uh, apple slices, cinnamon cider, sugar, fresh vanilla, nutmeg, and crushed clove. So this one is really lovely. And then um, it, the next one is Cider House. This was a new one they came out with this year. And it has been, this one's really lovely. It has been an interesting experience with this one because I got it in the store. And then when I brought it home, kind of every other time I smelled it, I would be like, oh, it just smells like cherry medicine. But I think there is, is it in the top note? No, there's actually no cherry. So I heard somebody say maybe it's the honey and the vanilla mixing together that maybe sort of make it smell like that. Anyhow, kind of every other time I smelled it, I wouldn't like it. But then the other times I'd be like, no, actually I like it. So I think it's a really complex scent and I'll be really curious to see how it smells when it's burning actually. Uh, so the notes for this one are uh, Fuji apple, golden honey, cinnamon bark, clove, nutmeg, sandalwood, tonka, and vanilla bean. So yeah, it's a very complex scent. It's really nice. Today I really like it. And like I said, I'm very curious as to how it will burn. My favorite without a doubt is Autumn in the Park. Last year when Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Rambles visited, she brought me this candle and I am hooked because this is so fresh and crisp smelling. It really is evocative of going on a walk on a crisp autumn day. And the set, uh, notes for this one are fresh apple, lemon zest, fallen leaves, apple tree, pumpkin, amber, musk, and patchouli. I'm not the biggest patchouli fan and it's not very strong in this. So I have to smell this one too. Yeah, this is just so nice. So I've been kind of smelling these each day because I'm just so excited and I know I'm going to be burning them during Victober, but saving them and I have had self-control and I can't wait to light those. And then also I have a very special video involving some candles tomorrow and I can't wait for you all to see it. So yes, definitely keep a lookout for that and I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, next uh I can't forget this Victober sweatshirt. It says, is it hashtag Victober yet? Thank you to Becky for getting me this. I wore it all winter last year and it's so fun to wear during the month, but even I like that it says, is it Victober yet? So when it's not Victober, I don't feel like it's weird to wear it. So yes, makes me very happy. And then I have some very exciting news. Last year, I was really sad when I didn't have nearly as many videos come out as I wanted to. And that's because, you know, I, I don't want to talk about it all the time, but I just don't feel well a lot of the time. 
and don't have as much energy. So I was already using a lot of energy on Victober Excitement. And so then to be filming and editing when I'm using up a lot of Victober energy, it just didn't really happen that much. And so then I was very sad because I didn't upload that many videos. And that's one of the ways I like to celebrate Victober because it's really fun to chat with all of you in the comments about Victorian literature. And this year I thought, you know what? I am not letting chronic illness get in the way of me having an amazing Victober. Even if I read less because I'm not feeling well, if I'm reading some Victorian literature and if I am putting some videos up, that will make me really happy. I started to get really excited about Victober mid-July. So I have been filming, editing, and scheduling videos since mid-July. And after I filmed these last four videos that I'm filming today, you should have around 21 videos. And these are videos, like I said, I have the last four I'm working on today, but the rest are up. They are edited, they are scheduled. I don't have to do a thing to them. I can't wait for you all to see them. I just have so much creative energy. You know how sometimes creativity can be energizing. And so since Victorian literature is something I'm very passionate about, I had just the creative juices were flowing. So I can't wait for you to see them. There's some really special ones. I won't really go into much detail because I want you to be surprised, but I will tell you a couple things. One is that there's going to be, aside from this Tuesday, the first day of October, there's going to be Poetry Tuesday, where I have a poetry video up each Tuesday in the month of October, and then a Ghost Story Saturday, where I have a ghost story that I have read and edited with some cool sound effects and creepy music, and I will have that up every Saturday in October. So please don't be a silent watcher, leave comments. I love to hear from anyone who is a new subscriber or who has just never thought to comment. The next thing that is making my Victober is some special tea that I ordered. This was in a vlog from this summer and it is this biscuit tea, malty biscuit brew, tastes like tea and biscuits. I had to order this from England. And then by the time it came, I thought, you know what? It will just make Victober even more fun to have this biscuit tea saved. So as long as I faithfully vlog, you will see my reaction to the biscuit tea. Can't wait to taste it. And then also I have, I had forgotten about this rooibos tea. But it is a really lovely, really light, um, just, I, I don't know how else to explain. It's a very light tea and it's just a really delightful flavor. So I will definitely be drinking more of this during Victober and can't wait to have lovely cozy teacups and Victorian literature. Next on the list are these um, Bronte Radio, BBC Radio Drama Collection. I did splurge with some uh, birthday money and they now have a collection of all of the recent in the recent years the BBC radio dramas that they've done so the two people who have been involved in them are Rachel Joyce and then Tracy Neal um, I knew the name Rachel Joyce because of the remarkable journey of Harold Fry but I had not I didn't know Tracy Neal and I'm definitely looking forward to listening to these. When I'm too tired to read and maybe I've run out of October booktube videos, I will definitely be listening to these. I can't wait. And then as I continue to reread through the Bronte books, I'll definitely be listening to these. But something lovely for you people is I found on YouTube a fair number of BBC Victorian radio dramas. So I have made a playlist. I will link it down below. And the one that particularly interested me, so I might get to it during Victober. If not, it would be a really nice winter thing, is a Diary of a Nobody radio drama. Diary of a Nobody is so funny. And I think it would just make a really great um, radio drama. Next are Victorian period dramas. I just think there's really, it's hard to find a more relaxing way to end a day than with a period drama and particularly Victorian ones. So I will tell you two more videos that I have coming out. One is on all of the Victorian period dramas that I want to watch. Obviously not just during Victober because there are so many I want to watch. And then on my favorite Victorian period dramas. So hopefully maybe a couple ones in there that you didn't know about or maybe had forgotten about. And just, I think that people who like this kind of thing would enjoy these. Then next on the list are Victorian movie soundtracks. I touched on this last year. Some of my favorites are Anna Karenina, Jane Eyre, 
and what was the other one? Oh, the Dr. Thorne soundtrack, the Jane Eyre soundtrack, and the Anna Karenina one are really good. If you're reading something with, that has some real emotional potency to it, like a Thomas Hardy book or a Bronte book. And then the Dr. Thorne is really fun for kind of domestic novels, ones that are more lighthearted and have some comedy to them. But I just love having really atmospheric music on while I'm reading. And also the W.E. or We soundtrack, which is not a Victorian movie. It is about uh, Wallace Simpson and the Duke of Windsor and their romance. But the soundtrack has such emotional power in it. Abel, and I don't know how to say his last name, but he also does a Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. And those are all really wonderful Victorian reading soundtracks, even if they aren't set in the Victorian era. And then I found several really great Spotify playlists. I did talk about these last year, but if you are new to Victober, I will link my favorites down below. Ones that have kind of different flavors to them. There's more lighthearted ones. And then there are ones that are really just have such like emotional potency to them. Okay, next on the list is less books on my TBR. I'm really pleased this year, even though my TBR video is very long because I, I go into detail about the books, I do actually have around seven or eight less books on my TBR. And I have some shorter items like a children's book. I have uh, some plays in there and some poetry. I'm hoping less books will help me to feel less overwhelmed. I do want to read a lot, but not put these just really unrealistic expectations on myself. So hopefully that will just help me to have as much fun as I can and make this year the best Victober that we've had yet. And then another one is Knit and Listen. This is a project, I want to say. I don't know. It's a it's an event, an event that I am one of the hosts, along with Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, Christy from the Tiny Chronicles, and Natalie from Curious Reader, where we host a knit and listen, where you can follow along with some of the projects that we are hosting. We are all doing different sweaters. Natalie and I are hosting the same sweater. The Eerie sweater, I think is how you say it. And this is the yarn that I'm using. It's in the color Current, which is a very similar cover color to um, this sweatshirt, but it's a little bit more wine in tone. And I just think that will be gorgeous for the winter time. Wish me luck on the pattern. It is a little bit complicated, but I think if I really put my mind to it, I can do it. And we will be listening to the audiobook of Adam Bede. So I'm very much looking forward to having some candles going, some tea on, some audiobooks and some knitting. It's going to be supreme. And then lastly, I know we have um, Victober challenges up, but in a moment of inspiration, I did think, wouldn't it be fun to have a Victober bingo in addition to uh, Victober challenges, simply because bingo is a little bit different. It's a little bit like a family friendly drinking game, you know, <laughs> so like every time you see a woman faint, you know, you, you mark out a box, kind of that that type of thing. So I tried to think about the different tropes from, from Victorian literature. And I think I have something really fun. I have linked it down below. The nice thing about this bingo board is it shuffles it up for you. So everyone will have a different bingo board and, um, you can save it on your computer. You can bookmark the page and you don't even have to print it out. You can just put a check on each box when you get it. And the page will remember what you have checked. So it's really helpful, but I thought that would be fun because also, it's something that you don't know the things you're going to come across in Victorian novels um, sometimes until you're reading them. So yes, take a look at that uh, Victober bingo if you would like even more kind of themey Victober fun. I hope you enjoyed this kind of bits and bobs video. Everyone, let's have just the best Victober yet. I cannot wait to see the videos, Instagram posts, comments, all of that. And happy first day of Victober.